Hey everyone, uh, this is Anil. Uh, I'm a CEO and co-founder of Multidots, Multicollab, and Dot Store. And today I have here with me Steve, uh, founder of Publish Press. Hi, Steve. Hey, hey, Anil. Steve, it has been a. Uh, when was the last time did we meet? I think WordCamp US, and then before that it was a uh, post status retreat. Yes, I think so. Um... I think we'll be together again, probably for WordCamp US in Washington, DC, which is coming up a couple of months from now. True. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and in order to um, start this, I wanted to ask you that you have been um, uh, managing Publish Press business for a, quite a long time. So in order for our listeners to connect uh, and understand more about your accomplishment and achievement with Publish Press. Uh, do you mind sharing anything like the number of plugins you have, installs, users, revenues, or anything that you feel uh, that will helpful? Oh, sure thing. Um, so we probably have about a million installs across all of our plugins. Um, we have Publish Press, which I guess is the main topic of today's conversation. And then we also have a kind of slideshow gallery plugin called MetaSlider, um, and also a, a kind of taxonomy organization plugin called TaxoPress, which deals with adding terms and categorizing posts. Um, but published press, I guess, is the focus and well, what um, led us to meet because Mortidots and you guys have a deep interest in publishing as well. And what we try and do at Publish Press is focus on filling in all the little bits and pieces for WordPress publishers that are not available in the WordPress core. Um, one simple example I'll give is we have a, a plugin called Publish Press Future. And <laughs> we came up with a name and then we built all the um, all the banners and promotional stuff for it around Back to the Future. So there's got a little flying car and mm -hmm. um, uh, lots of little characters from the movie. And what it does, despite the funny name, is a quite useful small thing. It mm. just allows you to set a unpublishing date for a post. Um, and you and me have both been around a while and seen other CMSs. Um, having an unpublished date for a post is something you would expect in in most platforms, mm -hmm. um, it isn't in WordPress. So we we have a plugin that does that. And it does a few more things too. Um, if it didn't, <laughs> we would be in trouble because the WordPress core could easily add that. Yeah. Um, but it's probably a good example of what we do. We try and flesh out pieces that publishers find really useful that aren't in the WordPress core. Um, a second example, we're working on a plugin that we're about to release, which will add custom statuses to posts. Um, so a normal WordPress post has draft, pending review, and published, mm -hmm. which for, for most CMSs is kind of lacking, and for most publishers is kind of lacking. So we're building a plugin that will add some more statuses. Um, it's probably similar to what the approach you take with Morty dot right that um, mm -hmm. um, and your multi collab plugin that your users the people you talk to right they really want to be able to collaborate on a document at the same time wordpress can't do it yet you build a solution um and you have you have a whole bunch of plugins and so do we <laughs> published press is it'll, it'll soon be 10 plugins in yeah, I was going to ask, like, how many plugins you have? So you have 10 plugins, millions of installs. And um, you also mentioned that you work with most of your customers are very um, large scale editorials and publishers and enterprises, right? Or like, what's your kind of customer mix? No, we, we definitely do get those people. Mm -hmm. um, but also we get a lot of startups as well. Um, right. A lot of small publishers. I mean, that's always been a... A strong interest of ours. I know um, 
with what you do, you're you're probably quite a bit more agency and enterprise focused than we are. Um, a lot of our work is done at the kind of the fifty, sixty dollar level. Mm-hmm. So we are we are quite open to having a single person who's a blogger or a single person who's starting a local news outlet. Mm. Um, and so we range from them all the way up to the enterprise customers as well. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah, I I admire uh, everything that you do, Steve, and uh, with especially with Publish Press. I think there were a bunch of uh, plugins that we, um, as an agency, um, you know, we recommend to some of our clients when they are looking for uh, any custom editorial or custom roles and permissions. So there are like a lot of different um, aspect of uh, customizing the editorial workflow or making the overall editorial workflow and publishing experience better for publisher is uh, something that your plugins, a uh, lot of your different plugins kind of help and empower there. Uh, and even, so that's that's more for the agency perspective, but just I think in general and from the product perspective as well, like when um, I was looking at starting multi-collab, you know, that, that's like multi loss is our agency business. And two years ago, I started uh, focusing on growing this product business. And as a part of that, at that time, like we had an experience, a lot of experience actually developing uh, the WordPress plugin, but turning a WordPress plugin into a product business is something very new for me at the time. And so, yeah, I was looking for some inspirations about who are the other WordPress plugin and product businesses, you know, who actually do a really good job in order to um, uh, the communicating the message and 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 showcasing and explaining uh, the product in the best way. And yeah, so we learned. Uh, I had some inspirations um, going through some of your plugins, and we kind of had uh, some profound uh, learning from there. Plus, uh, my conversation with you when we met first time during the post status retreat. You shared a few uh, really good uh, advice and tips in order to how to grow a product business. So I'm very grateful well, for that. Well, how have you found it? To me, you, um, to to be frank, uh, your your agency has been uh, far more successful, at least in terms of you know, size mm-hmm. and scale, than our plugin business has been. And I think that's the same. The biggest businesses in the WordPress space are. Hosting companies first, and then agency second. If you build a successful agency like you've done, mm-hmm. they can just scale massively. Um, how have you found it being an agency founder, co-founder, a- adapting to the product business? Does it feel small, perhaps, compared to running an agency dealing with multi-million-dollar enterprise projects? Yeah, um, yeah, that's an interesting question. In fact. And um, so when I started Multidots and uh, um, roughly like 14 years ago, at that time, like there was, it was very challenging, like growing an agency business in itself is, is really challenging. I mean, in a way, like all businesses are one or other way challenging, but I think uh, agency business is much more about um, the, like the custom projects and very, um, you know, people oriented, I would say. So yeah, it was very challenging, and in the last fourteen years, um, you know, we have been able to build the right kind of process and systems and stuff like that. So it ended up being a very smooth operation, and I started to feel a little bit bored. It was too smooth. <laughs> yeah, it was too smooth. Exactly. Too well. so I was like, I was looking for a challenge. I was like, I want to do something that is uh, that actually takes me out of my comfort zone, you know, because one 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 of my life motto is that you grow when you get out of your comfort zone, you know, because if I just keep doing the same thing, same thing that I've been doing like 10 years ago, um, I will not be able to grow personally. So I was kind of looking for a new challenge for me, but as a part of the challenge, uh, my idea was, my goal was that I want to create a, like a different kind of, uh, business, but also solve a very difficult problem. I don't just don't want to create like, you know, so that's where 
the um, I see an opportunity with uh, multi collab and kind of like started uh, focusing and growing that side. Um, yeah, to your you're, question, you're mm-hmm. not building another formless plugin. You're not you're not playing this on easy mode. You're, <laughs> you <laughs> you you move it over to the plugin development space and immediately went right into hard mode, building a <laughs> collaborative. Um, kind of uh, synchronous platform on top of WordPress. Yeah, I know. I think uh, I I think I have a little uh, hobby or habit for just doing things which is difficult. In fact, this interview as well, right? Like I'm an introvert. English is not okay. my first language, but I knew that I wanted to kind of like, you know, um, invite people like you to just discuss about how we run business and, and our life. So there is so much wisdom and knowledge in um, you know the the WordPress founders around the world, and I wanted to to do that. So it is it was something that I like kind of like um, struggle with this idea that I don't like being on a video. I don't like I'm an introvert. You know, English is not probably I will pronounce a million different words. Um, you know, in a wrong way. But that's where I was like, okay, this is this is what something that right now is out of my comfort zone, and that's exactly why I should do that. <laughs> well, the um, probably the smartest thing I've ever been told about podcasts and doing this stuff is that it's it's the only time you ever get an hour hmm. or an hour and a half of pure concentration and focus from someone that you really want to meet. And now mm. um, I probably I'm not way up there on the on the rankings of um, of either people you necessarily would want to meet. You probably got some heroes that you'd like to meet, mm. um, uh, or I'm perhaps not very high up on the the totem pole in terms of sending out invites. But when we ran a, a video podcast regularly, we would get people like um, and one that sticks in my mind is Jason Cohen from mm. from WP Engine. Right. I mean, the opportunity to have an hour, an hour and a half of just pure focused one-on-one conversation with someone like that um, was worth all the nervousness and the preparation and the mm. uh, all the hassle involved in doing one of these podcasts. Um, and yeah, this must be 10, 15 other conversations um, that if you invite other people on, mm-hmm. um, you get to talk to them unfiltered, um, ask them questions where yeah. even if you meet them at a conference, you may get five minutes at most before they get whisked off. Um, it's, um, I think you're doing a great thing. I'm not sure who else you have lined up, but um, you pick the right guests and just for an hour you get to brainstorm with people that you really want to talk to. Yeah. Um, even <laughs> even if the, the words don't come out right, um, <laughs> even if you, you you feel a bit nervous on camera. It's a, yeah, it's a great thing. Yeah, and and I I think one thing that um, what you shared about the questions, you know, so that's something that I have found very powerful in my life. That all the people around us, you know, they have so much wisdom, experience, you know, expertise on different topic, variety of different subjects. And all those wisdoms is just one question away. You know, if you just ask the right question, you know, it can unlock the door of, um, you know, the the decades of wisdom and expertise. And so, yeah, that's why that's what also kind of like encouraged me to uh, to do this, uh, like a video series and podcast series to kind of like start interviewing different people in this world and uh, yeah, bringing the expertise and knowledge that that we that we have. Yeah, there's, um, I think, I can't remember where I heard it. I, I to, so much of the internet just kind of floats through your brain in in one ear and then floats out the other. Yeah. Like someone someone said, uh, what is, if, if you're meeting someone, ask them, what is the one thing that you know more about than anything else, than anyone else? Hmm. And they say the answers you get just um, to ask someone what they're interested in, you get the most amazing answers. Hmm. Um, I think I heard uh, that too. Yeah, uh, I think some something about like yeah, something that you are excited about or something like that. What is something that 
you are it, most excited about? Let me test it on you, Anil. All right. <laughs> what, um, so outside of WordPress, you're not allowed to answer WordPress on this. What is something that you know more about than just about anyone else? What what takes up a big part of your brain outside of WordPress? Meditation. Tell me more. It, um, since you were since you were young, since you became an entrepreneur and started getting stressed out, um, since when? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think a long time ago, probably nine years ago, uh, 2014, and when I started Multi Dots business uh, in 2009, for the first five years, I was working very hard, working probably 14, 16 hours a day, and was very successful. Things were going well. But I think it was 2014, that's where I hit the wall and I kind of like started feeling like less excited, less passionate about the work or life and had some health issues and all of that. So that's when I turned into, um, you know, the mindfulness, uh, spirituality and meditation. So I went to, uh, I wanted to go somewhere, you know, where I don't think about the work. So I signed up for this 10 day uh, meditation um, silent meditation retreat in uh, North India. And that was a, a profound experience for me because during that 10 day, I learned the power of our breath and mindfulness and how that everything that I want to feel, you know, or, or achieve in my life, you know, I have that control uh, through uh, going inward uh, than than outward, so that was my 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 experience. And since that, since then, I continued to read about spirituality, mindfulness, and meditation, and learn about it. So I went to a bunch of different meditation retreats and courses in last uh, nine years. I read probably 20, 20, 30 different books on spirituality, yoga, and meditation. And beginning of this year. I went to Bali and I did uh, uh, a yoga and meditation teacher training program. So I did a full one month uh, meditation and yoga teacher training program where I learned again a lot about uh, you know the the power of yoga and meditation and mindfulness. So and that is something that actually a lot of people doesn't know. But like every uh, Wednesday, in fact, this morning, you know, like every Wednesday morning. Uh, I will do a meditation for multi dots team members. So I will lead a meditation workshop, meditation practice. And a lot of my employees uh, for multi dots, they will join for the session. And I've been doing that for almost like a year. So yeah, meditation is something that. Oh, so you've trained to become a teacher and now you're practicing being a teacher with your staff. That's correct. You, you feel more in control, more more resilient perhaps with with this practice yeah um so yeah this is this is very interesting because a lot of time like in the beginning when we practice meditation it's very hard to see that how meditation is impacting us right or helping us it's very hard to see those changes and sometimes those changes are very subtle and i think that is where a lot of uh, beginners or like someone who's starting with meditation, they will give up on uh, trying that for five, 10 days or a, or a month. So one thing that I learned is that after each meditation, like every day after the meditation, um, I will just observe that what has changed inside me, you know? So for example, one thing I observe my handwriting, you know, it started getting better. After meditation, hmm. if I write something, my my handwriting will be much better than uh, I would write it, you know, without meditation or like a normal. So there are like so many such changes, even in day to day, my conversations, energy level. I saw that like I start my day very early in the morning, like 5 a.m. So before I was like in the beginning when I was practicing meditation or was not regular with the meditation, I would get tired around 11, 11, 30 or 12, you know? So now, you know, uh, I have observed that I will get tired somewhere around 3.30 or four, but that's where something I feel like, oh, you know, I need a little bit rest, but otherwise pretty much 
from morning until three. So these are like very subtle level changes that usually we will not notice it and we have to pay attention to it. it it's not like going on a on a diet or going to the gym. If you go on, on a diet, you can feel your belt going one or two notches tighter. Mm -hmm. If you go to the gym, you might feel your shoulders getting a little stronger, but meditation, it requires more, more careful observance of the changes. Yeah. And I think that's, that's where, um, especially like uh, it, because it actually impacts much more on, um, on our subtle energy level, you know? So that's where, uh, like if you do like a full day meditation, then probably you will see the changes immediately. But a lot of time we all are busy, you know, we don't have like time to sit in a meditation for 10, 12 hours, right? So usually we will practice 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes meditation a day. And that is why it takes a little bit longer or we need to observe uh, these changes on a subtle level. But it does actually is very helpful in terms of um mental health and overall well-being. Um, I have personally noticed that since I started practicing meditation, my productivity, my work productivity in general has increased a lot because when I try, when I am working on something, my focus on that task, you know, and being present and fully available and involved has increased. And that's something I think is the biggest productivity leak for a lot of us where Sometimes, a lot of time, it's not about the time, it's about the energy, right? We all have one hour, but what you can do in that hour depends on your energy level and my energy level. So you, you meditate in the morning and then you will do, will you do like a, a reset or a, another short meditation later in the day if you're feeling tired or feeling like your concentration is slipping? Um, so... I think so far I have uh, learned and practiced 30 different types of meditation, three zero, and each meditation has, I think, different purpose. So I am the meditation practice that now I'm doing, it's every morning around 5.15, 5.30. So I get up at a five o'clock, do my yoga and push-ups, and like there is my health routine that I do. And after that, I will practice this 25-minute meditation in the morning. So then that meditation, with that meditation, I will be like, you know, it will give me the energy uh, for the pretty much like uh, until three or four. And around 3.30 or four, I'll take a short nap, like 10, 15 minutes short nap. So that's like my uh, my recharge time, you know, where uh, that will give me the extra boost of energy. So are you still working hardcore days? between the agency and between uh, Morty Collab and the other projects you're doing? Are mm -hmm. you still putting in 12, 13, 14 hour days? Um, is, it, is the meditation something that helps you get through long, tough days? Yeah. Um, so in terms of the time, I think like I tell myself that I kind of work from five to five. So that's my routine right now. So 5 a.m. until 5 p.m. So that's my like time where I pretty much spend, sometimes I work until like six, two, but that's not all the work. So some part of the day is um, purely business, like work, multi-collab, multi-dots and all of that. But in between, uh, I have uh, plenty of other time for my personal growth and personal development. So I would be learning, reading and like doing other stuff uh, that helps me learn and grow. So, so yeah, I think that's kind of like how, so I'm technically kind of like, that's my routine, but in between now I've started to integrate a little bit more like the personal development and personal growth time as well in this, in this work routine. Okay. You're getting a little older and not, uh, you're not pushing through <laughs> nonstop, <laughs> like maybe, like, yeah. like maybe before you burned out when, um, yeah. back in 2014. True. And that was the thing. Like, I think, uh, you know, I did not have any interest at that time outside work. So work was the only thing that I know I was kind of like excited about. And uh, and also when I was young, you know, I was 23 years old at that time. And also when we are young, we feel that we have this infinite energy. But uh, at, it doesn't matter the age, but I think, you know, the more time you put at some point, it will start catching up. And that's where 
I think I did not pay too much attention to not care on my health, fitness, like mental and, and physical fitness. And that's something was my biggest lesson in my life that doesn't matter how busy I get, how successful I get, I need to have uh, my physical and mental fitness as my part of my daily routine. It, um, it, I, I'm a, I have a little bit of a different lifestyle than you that I have kids who are one has just become a teenager one is about to become a teenager mm -hmm. but i'm i'm not i'm not that um that different from you in that life is busy and the only time any kind of exercise gets done mm. is five o'clock in the morning mm. if it's not done by six if it's not done before say 7 a.m then then life comes in like an avalanche and uh, mm -hmm. The kids are yelling and Slack is going off and email <laughs> is going off. Um, um, it, it needs to be it needs to be deliberately carved out of mm. time early in the morning before everyone else wakes up. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah, I think um, yeah, it's it's a big challenge and that's something that not challenge in the sense like we all have a very different uh, priorities in life and family and business you know someone of like is in the beginning of their business of course like they need to need they might have like different priorities uh but yeah i think uh, the helpful thing is a routine like the one moment we create the best routine that works for us i think that's where i i personally suggest to kind of start with um you know um great all right. So, Stu, we talked about some of my personal interest outside my work. How about you? Um, do you do anything uh, outside work that excites you or something that's unique to you? Um, okay. So, I um, I had that question for you, that, and your answer was meditation, right? It was one, one thing that you know more about than just about anything else. So, I, I do some things like play soccer, for example, hmm. but that, that wouldn't really answer the question because um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a very good soccer player even. Um, so, and I certainly don't know more about it than anyone else. Hmm. Um, so my answer to the question would be, uh, I would be universities, which is... Um, may require a little bit of quick explanation hmm. that I was a, I was a, I grew up as a, as a family of teachers. Everyone in my family was a teacher, a head teacher, principal, um, uh, worked at universities, all teachers of some sort. And I became a teacher and wanted to um, become a university professor. Um, all the uni university professors told me that it was a terrible job. It didn't pay enough money. <laughs> so I, I quit that idea um, and then became a regular teacher and found out soon that um, it didn't pay enough. <laughs> I should. I, um, and it, when my kids came along, I had to quit being a teacher and get into IT. Hmm. But I, I've always, um, always had an interest in the teaching side of things. Hmm. I ran a, a training company for 10 years. So we mm. taught people how to use WordPress and Drupal and other platforms. Right. Uh, we did books and we did classes and all sorts of training. Mm. Um, and we sold that company a few years ago and we've been doing WordPress plugins ever since. Um, but a, a part of my brain has still been very interested in education. And so on the side, I've been right putting together the pieces to try and write a book about um, universities. Hmm. Um, I've spent way too much time around them. Um, what is the, the purpose of a university? Um, hmm. it's, it's a, it'll be a self-published book in oh, probably three, four years now because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm too busy to actually finish it. Um, but I'm reading about the history of, universities, where they come from, what they're for, um, and trying to formulate some ideas around it. Um, I found it to be quite therapeutic. Um, hmm. I was going to ask, like, is that something, are you thinking about maybe turning into a profession in the future? Is just uh, just for uh, 
I mean, nothing in education makes enough money. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> with fact, the, one thing I forgot yeah. to tell you that my first job, like before, like when I was in a high school, my first part-time job from the high school until the college, like the uh, first few years of the college was as a teacher. So I was actually teaching computers, like how to use computer and like uh, Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. And I was also teaching accounting um, to, um, yeah, you know, like uh, computer-based accounting. So I did that for like pretty much uh, for uh, three years as a part-time. But that was my first job, yeah. Uh, when you mentioned about the teaching, you know, that's what uh, triggered me. I was like, huh, I didn't know that I was also kind of like a teacher. I started my career as a teacher. Oh, yeah. It, um, it's a good place to start. Mm. Um, and I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to to kind of circle back to it as I get older. Mm. Um, I At the moment, it's just a, a kind of a, a deep hobby trying to understand the history of education basically mm -hmm. and trying to write about it um but at the moment it's mainly a kind of a sideline technology is my day job my business mm. what keeps our staff employed um but um let's say over the last three four years me and you have been heavily involved in gutenberg um and Almost every time you install it, there's a change. I installed mm. Gutenberg again today. I think like version version 16, I think it was. Okay. Um, of the plugin. And there's all these radical new changes just from like two days ago when I used it last. There's a like a new uh command center, like you see on a Mac yeah. computer, mm -hmm. just a big search box. Mm -hmm. Um and like dozens of other little changes and ways of different ways of interacting with it. Hmm. And, and that's life. That's the life that me and you have chosen of things moving at such an incredible pace that uh, I guess maybe you, you find kind of a respite in meditation. Um, I, I found some of it in reading about history, like, okay, hmm. what, were, what were things like in 1200? Uh, opening up a book and reading about um, 800, 900 years ago right. um, is kind of clears my mind <laughs> so that <laughs> when I go back to work the next day, yeah. things are moving at a million miles again. Right. Um, I've had a bit of a rest from it. Yeah. But I think on your point that it doesn't matter like what your interest is, but I think it's really important to have um, you know, a habit or interest that you go back to after the work, because that's where I think a lot of us struggle because when we don't have any outside work interest and then we end up burying ourselves uh, in, into the work. Yeah. I, I get a little worried about staff members, people who work for us, who, mm. if I ask them what they did on the weekend, they'll be like, oh, I played around on the computer, played some, some mm. video games. I, no, it's, that's not healthy. You, Hmm. I try and nudge them, um, go uh, go do some gardening, go mm -hmm. um, go play some music, go uh, sport something that really grabs your attention outside of work. Yeah. Um, it's normally the young ones who, yeah. who if I, maybe in their early 20s, mid 20s, if I ask them, what do you do outside of work? Oh, not much. Right, mm. I dabble on my computer after work, mm. Mm. and maybe, maybe the ones who are a little older, I think, have learned the lesson that they need something else. Yeah, I know. I think that's that's kind of like big challenge nowadays. To what I see is that, like, we complain about the time. Like, I don't have a time to do things. Right. But actually, when you make time available for you, you know, the biggest struggle is to what to do in that free time, you know, because I think that's where, <laughs> and that is where when you're not able to make that decision, you know, and then you go back to to work and start complaining about that I don't have a time. <laughs> it, I, it's not easy. Um, it is not, yeah. I, 
Um, I, I live in uh, Florida now. I'm British originally, but have ended up in Florida. And I think the same may be true of where you live in Austin, mm. in Texas, mm. that since the pandemic, there's been a lot of a lot of remote workers have moved to where I live and where you live. Mm -hmm. You know, people will just pick up their laptop and move down here. Yeah. So I think of the people I know on the street I live in, I'm calling from my home office to talk to you. 90% of them are remote workers. Uh, maybe half of them have moved here in the last couple of years. Hmm. And I've seen that it's not easy for them. That um, a lot of them don't really know what to do outside of work. They, hmm. they, one guy I spoke to recently, he said he's barely left his house in like a month. Yeah, um, it's. I, I, I have a like, what, what's the phrase? A, a hot take, um, <laughs> a like a something you'd put on Twitter as like a yeah a debating point that I think remote work is going to become a bit of a, a mental health crisis in mm. the next few years. So, you know, people like me and you, we've done it a long time, kind of got used to it. Um, but I've seen not just with some of our staff, but also the people around in our neighborhood, people I know that it, it's a challenge to build a life outside of work. Mm. It, often... You'd go to the office um, before remote work took off, and there would be people right there in front of you to talk to, to uh, to socialize with, even if you didn't like them, even if they weren't the best fit. Hmm. Um, but remote work, there's none of that that outlet. You have to to build your entire social network by yourself, more or less. Hmm. And that's a, that's a challenge. Hmm. Um, it is actually, and um, one of the I'm not sure if I it was a podcast or a book, but I did um, learn about that. Not just I think remote work, but in general, like at this point of the the time where technology has made everything so accessible, easy, and and comfortable for us. So we have not been challenging ourselves or not like doing things that will challenge us or, you know, um, excite us or like can do things that I think that might also be something that's kind of like leading people more towards um, distress and anxiety. And um, yeah, like also um, like it was easy in the past to kind of like just kill a day, like, you know, just leave a day, because if you, let's say, uh, go and meet someone, you know, then there is like a whole journey um, of doing things. And there was an enjoyment in that journey and the planning and the process. Now, if you look at the planning process and journey, the technology and all the conveniences around us, they, it has made all of that, um, you know, the duration of that very short, so then you are seeing the results or outcomes or achievements immediately. So now those are not something that's giving a motivation for the next adventure. Hey, that kind of uh, brings us back full circle to your point at the beginning of the chat about why you took on uh, doing Multicollab. Hmm. Like, yeah. Why? Because <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah. Like you, you could have sat there and run your agency and... Um, and continued a successful life and gone on podcasts mm -hmm. and uh, had a gone to conferences and had a good time but um um doing things that you don't know if they're going to succeed or not mm. uh it's good for you yeah yeah uh, um, sure. could kind of to circle back to wordpress how Hmm. Um, you've took with Multicollab, you took on a um, a whole new challenge, right? You you decided to dive even before what because 
Gutenberg with um, WordPress phase three is diving into some difficult territory around um, enabling people to collaborate on a document together, like a Google Doc style, three, four people all editing and making changes at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, difficult technical challenge. And is, am I right yeah. in thinking that you and your team just dove right in and <laughs> said, that's what we're going to do? Yeah. Um, you're working on it right now, right? <laughs> so, you, yeah, I think you're right that real-time editing. So just, I mean, going back a little bit, like just the whole collaboration on bringing the collaboration inside WordPress itself is very, very challenging. But real-time editing in particular is much more challenging than anything else because uh, all the other uh, platform, if I look, let's say Notion, Google Doc, or Microsoft Word, or Canva, or even Wix, you know, they are all very much like, you know, the centrally hosted. So that basically you don't go and install that software just onto your server. Like, you know, the instance with Google Doc, it's all centrally managed. The challenge with the WordPress is that like WordPress is much more like the majority of the WordPress installs are self-hosted. You know, people like to actually download the code, install it into like variety of different hosting or their own solutions. So it's not centrally managed or controlled and implementing uh, a peer-to-peer -peer communication or real-time real communication or collaboration is, is is very much challenging in 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 that sense. Do you? Um, I, I've seen with the the WordPress.com team little hints that they're working on it. That occasionally, um, I mean, I, I've got to be honest. It's, it's been a bit mysterious. I'm I'm probably follow the news about this stuff as closely as as anyone because our business is so closely linked to it mm. and i've had a hard time figuring out what's going on i've seen i've seen some hints that the wordpress team have been working on it but also that they've been struggling um that they've done some soft launches and then taken them back again um how close are you to getting a product that could could be put out there um is it a challenge that you guys are close to solving or are there still hurdles ahead? Yeah. Um, so if you look at the collaboration, right, there are two things. One is real-time collaboration, like, and the second is async collaboration. So async co collaboration is where you do the commenting and provide the suggestions and edit becomes suggestions. So that's something that we launched two years ago. Um, async communication and collaboration in WordPress. And uh, it was challenging, but at this moment, you know, we have around 10,000 plus installs of multi-collab and they are all kind of like leveraging the async collaboration uh, features of commenting and suggestion. So that's something that I see in my opinion, I think at this moment, you know, uh, we had like a very good success with that, like launching it 10,000 plus installs and users trying it, playing with it, but also some real businesses and enterprises like uh, Gannett, you know, so they have a bunch of different web properties uh, and then smartassets.com. So that's kind of like also one of the, the big publisher in personal finance and investment. So there are some big names who are also utilizing the multi-collab, especially this commenting and suggestion. So that's where I think we already have a success. Now, the second part, which is um, real-time collaboration. So that is where multiple users simultaneously can edit a WordPress post. And in a real time, they see all the changes that other, other users are, 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 are updating or editing. So that piece is something that was a big challenge. And so we launched uh, a prototype um, three months ago, okay. I think somewhere around March. So that's where we launched the first prototype of like actual working model of real-time editing in WordPress. Uh, I think 500 plus users, they signed up for it, for the demo because they were interested in. So we just wanted to first 
play with that and see how um, it performs. So we have been checking and it actually worked really well for a lot of them. There were some feedback we received and we continue to improve and, and fix those issues and, and improve it. So my goal was to kind of like just have this live environment and demo where people can just play with it. And so we can get some uh, feedback. So, and then we have been working on improving it. So at this moment, what is, uh, you know, in the next two months, uh, we are planning to now bring this feature as a part inside multi-collab. So along with the commenting and suggestion, uh, people can also use the real-time editing. In the beginning, um, we want to launch it as beta because there are still each WordPress instance and installation is very unique and personalized. So we it's very hard to kind of like make an assumption that it will work for all the WordPress setup. But majority of the, the hosting companies, we tested with them, uh, all the popular WordPress plugin. In fact, we actually tested with uh, some of the public WordPress plugin as well. So we kind of tried to see that how this works with the, the most popular plugins, themes, and hosting. So that's kind of like the confidence we have. And uh, at some point in the August, we are going to launch this real-time editing feature uh, as a part of Multicolab. Oh, congrats. It, yeah. It, I think you'll be the first, almost, almost certainly the first to put out something public and um, and and let people see what this kind of experience looks like in WordPress. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that. How about um, your clients? Do you do you know if any of your customers who are into publishing space have been asking about or excited about the collaboration feature? Yeah, we. Um, I guess because we don't advertise it, it's not not a feature we have. We, um, I, I guess, our questions are mostly around. Um, but do they ever ask the, you about like, hey, you know, um, we are looking for like collaboration in the WordPress or something like that? I, most most of our questions actually, <laughs> I, I'd say most of our questions are about locking people out of things, because um, mm. um, uh, kind of where our plugins are um, situated in the market, mm. we get a lot of questions about. I have these editors, but I don't trust them. Mm. How can I make sure that? The editors do not have access to edit this feature, <laughs> or, or I want my editors to submit all their changes mm. and then have them approved. Um, so uh, um, we do come at it from a slightly different angle. I guess our um, our solutions are not a side by side with yours. Not not competitive. Mm. Um, they have slightly different feature sets, um, but. I, I think the people who will get most excited about collaboration are the, the publishers who relied heavily on Google Docs before. Um, and the younger kids as well, like my, I mentioned before that I've got a couple, <clears throat> a couple of daughters, one who's just become a teenager hmm. and one who will be soon. Uh, stuff like collaborative editing, working on something together is completely natural. Um, hmm. They will... The, the older daughter is working on a um, a school project with several friends right now that she has to be has to be finished in a couple of weeks. So she'll have her um, her phone up in front of her. They'll be FaceTiming, and they'll <clears throat> each of them will be in a different house, hmm. and they'll be working and collaborating on the document together. Hmm. One hundred. I think they use uh, Microsoft's OneDrive. Um, mm. But they can all see each other typing. Yeah, Com completely normal experience for them. Yeah. Then they get the, the back end of WordPress, mm. kind of old fashioned. Mm. Um, uh, wait, my friend is in there. I have to kick them out, or I have to wait for them to. Yeah. To finish. Um, yeah. So maybe our customers aren't asking, but I can absolutely see mm. the demand for the kind of stuff you're building. Right. And that's something that actually also inspired me to kind of like commit myself and like time and energy and efforts into this direction. Because um, if you see like any 
application, whether it's a Notion or Canva, like even design tool, content creation tool. Even I think, you know, the um, we consider Wix as one of the competitor for the WordPress. Wix right. also has a collaborative editing. So that was something that's kind of like uh, uh, a surprising for me and like, you know, the one actually motivation for putting in time and resources into developing this because there is a need, you know, like all the applications, content creation applications nowadays, they are all uh, collaboration first, you know, so like within the, the launch of that first or second year, like Notion, for example, it has just been like like less than five-year-old um, software. And if you look at that, you know, they already have the collaboration since last two years. So that's where something that I see that, as you say, like, you know, it becomes like so obvious and so something that like uh as you mentioned about your your daughters like you know they it is very default in nature or expectations for them and that's something that i think wordpress right now is missing and uh, it it needs now it, it's a little unfair to complain about wordpress for lacking this because the technical challenge of doing this on mm-hmm. self-hosted platforms is is vastly bigger than doing it on a hosted platform. That's true. Um, but you know, people like my daughter, or um, or maybe our some of our customers, mm. they don't care. They, exactly. That was my point. Like you know, <laughs> yeah. we understand it's technically challenging, but for them, it's just like a feature. You know, they just need it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's awesome. Um, we're we're doing this at the end of June, so maybe six eight weeks, and you'll be able to have this for the public to test um, inside your plugin. Even That's if true. it's a beta version, it, it'll, you guys will be the first one to market. Yeah, and we are very excited about that. We have put a lot of efforts and work into it. And the early uh, results has been very, very promising. Even we are also uh, utilizing that internally. So all our multi-collab, multi-dots, dot store blogs, we are publishing util- using multi-collab and real-time editing. And yeah, uh, it is it is very promising so far, and I'm really excited about the launch and see how it can help um, you know people to publish content uh, collaboratively and 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 better. So in your testing, you've been able to scale down to say five ten dollar a month hosting. Um, that's a good question. So our the focus at this moment has been. From we kind of like started with the plugins, like what are the top plugins that we need to make sure that um, um, multi apps should work, and then we started with uh, um, the users. So that was another thing, like how many users simultaneously can collaborate um, in the real time. So we did testing up to twenty or twenty five users, and there wasn't a performance issue wow. in reliable hosting. Um, of course, like, you know, we can, it can scale to more depending on the server and other stuff. But when it comes to the server, specifically the hosting, you know, in order to implement the real-time editing specifically, um, technically speaking, we are using a WebSocket. Uh, um, I'm sure you know what, what WebSocket is. And in order to leverage the WebSocket, we need to have a compatible server. So there are like certain configuration and standard, like minimum server configuration that needs to be there in order to use this feature. Uh, as long as you have that, we have seen the the multi-collab uh, real-time editing works fine. But if there is a server which is not maybe the latest version of PHP or they don't have the latest updated version of Apache or Nginx, I think that's where uh, this particular feature, real-time editing, they will not be able to utilize and we have like done that so that it will be disabled for them, but they can still utilize the the commenting and other features. Oh, okay. So it may be another push to get hosting companies to up, update their offerings, move off PHP 5, um, move to, to PHP 8, um, mm-hmm. update their platforms. If, how are you thinking about this in terms of... Um, I mean, feel free to say <laughs> there's a trade secret because you have um, uh, a lot, a lot kind of time and effort put into this. Um, but my, my question would be, how are you thinking about this in terms of the WordPress core? Because Gutenberg Phase Three 
the the core promise. If if you ask your average WordPress developer in the street, hmm. do you know about phase three? They might say, yeah, that's the Google Doc style editing coming. That's that's the promise that the WordPress core team have made. Right. How are you thinking about your work in conjunction with such a a direct promise from the WordPress team? Yeah. Um, no, that's a that's a very fair question. And in fact, um, I have got that question a lot uh, from even my team as well. Oh, we, we, we I'm trying decided. to be more interesting. Uh, <laughs> I, I, Actually, I yeah, that's, that's a question I, I've been getting a lot, uh, okay. and especially like even when I decided to invest time and energy and money into building multi-collab product business, that was I was already aware at that time that uh, Gutenberg Phase 3 will be the collaboration and some of the features that we are building today uh, will be available on um, on uh, WordPress core in the future, you know, and and, and it will also be free. So the way I look at it, Steve, is that if we look at like any software or application platform, let's say Apple, right? So iPhone has notes application, it has email calendar. Despite that, like those are all free, you know, and the default install, you don't have to do anything. Despite that, we still, a lot of us, we still like to use Notion or some other types of application on top of the the iPhone or Apple ecosystem, right? So that's, I think, the one thing that um, it has been true for the WordPress ecosystem as well, that there are a lot of default features like roles and permissions and stuff like that, but there are some pro users. So there are some basic users who are very happy with what is offered as a part of the core and free, but then there are some enterprise and pro users who actually needs more and needs things slightly different, slightly personalized and customized for their needs. And I think that is where I see that multi-collab is kind of like, you know, going to help and will be making a difference. Um, but other than that, yeah, you know, I'm I'm actually much more excited that collaboration is going to be part of the WordPress core because then I don't have to worry about uh, encouraging everyone to to use it because once that happens, you know, people will taste the the benefit of collaboration, and once they do that, if it works for the basic users, that's fine. And a lot of features in multi collab as well are free, you know. So that's something that we are also trying to to kind of incorporate into our offering to basically offer a lot of uh, collaboration features free. And there are some very specific features which are more targeted for the uh, the pro and enterprise users. And that's where we are going to monetize. Uh, but on top of that, support is something that you and I, we both have experienced that uh, the support of the, the WordPress core versus support on a premium plugin is like expectations are different for the businesses and enterprise. And that is something that we are also um, trying to make ourselves uh, more, um, you know, the different and better. And most importantly, I think third thing would be um, the updates, like WordPress core by design will be, is big, so it is slow, you know? So any changes into WordPress core or collaboration will take six months or a year to come back, like even the basic changes, right? On the other end, because we are small, you know, but we are very focused on this, just one aspect of the WordPress. So that's why we are fast in terms of like rolling out the new changes and fixes and stuff like that. So that's where I see that in terms of the um, the business model and the the how it will make sense for multi-dots. Um, so yeah, that's where I see um, that there is a, there is a room for, for multi-collab to grow. Yeah, I, I think from the sounds of it, we think about this in the same way. Um, mm. At the beginning, I talked about the Publish Press Future plugin, which allows you to have an expiry date um, and just the extra things that are just fleshing out the taking the core experience of WordPress hmm. and enhancing it. Um, it's kind of the WordPress core can't do everything. Hmm. So there's a there's a lot of need from the more power the power users to to have those extra features, extra items that the core just can't ship everything. Yeah. Um, 
if, for example, um, phase three, they seem to have quietly started talking a lot about revisions and baking more advanced revisions into everything. Mm -hmm. So we have a plugin called revisions and we're just about to launch a feature which will allow you to see in one screen a list of all the revisions on your site mm. and, and browse them and filter them and view them because at the moment the revisions are all hidden deep in the WordPress core. Um, so I like the way you think on that, that I think it's similar to us that the WordPress core is doing excellent work. Um, there's just a market for that extra five or 10% of features that the power users want. Yeah. You have more courage than me. That was, uh, I, I looked, we looked at it deeply three or four years ago mm. and said that we're not a company of the size to take the risk of building something mm. like collaborative editing. It's, mm. it's difficult. I, I'm pretty sure the WordPress team are finding it difficult. So we've got big congratulations to you for getting it done. Thank you, Stu. Yeah, I think, honestly, uh, I I think I was just uh, focusing more on the idea and um, inspiration. Most of the work has been done by my team. And sometimes I feel, yeah, you know, that I'm really grateful for them to actually accept this challenge. Because, yeah, I, I didn't have to do it. I was more like on the sideline, you know, but they were all who were actually in the arena and like doing this thing. So, yeah, I think uh, uh, I hope uh, yeah they also enjoyed working on a challenge like this. It is it is fun to do something that has not been done before. It, um, mm. um, I had the example earlier of building another forms plugin. Mm -hmm. Maybe that that's just not exciting to a lot of developers. Mm. But doing something like um, synchronous collaborative editing. Hmm. in WordPress never been done before <laughs> yeah I'm sure I'm sure you probably had the right developers on this and I'm sure they were excited we do and yeah that's true like most of the team members um who has been working on multi-collab uh yeah they have been very very happy about their contribution and you are right like I told them in one of our town hall meeting I was like I'm jealous because as a web developer you know this is kind of stuff that I wish, you know, I had in the beginning of my career, I had an opportunity to work on building something that has not, not been done before. Um, and um, fortunately, they also feel the same way. They also feel that yeah, they are working on something which is very challenging, not been done before, and can impact a very large people who use WordPress or publish with WordPress, you know. So, yeah, I think it's, it, it, is, it is really um a proud and an interesting challenge to work on as a developer so are you are you going to launch at wordcamp us is that the or just before perhaps i think it will happen before because okay. this uh, real time editing uh, will be we are planning to launch around early august so the first few weeks uh, of the uh, august so yeah right before the wordcamp us Cool. Um, well, you'll probably have a booth there. Um... Yeah, we are uh, sponsoring. Yeah, we are one of the sponsor of the WordCamp okay. here, so we will be there and yeah, uh, showing the demo of the real time editing and collecting the feedbacks. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, Steve, let's quickly switch the gears to um, a couple of questions, and then we'll slowly um, head to the wrapping up. Uh, one question I have for you is how are you using the AI tools right now in your work or life? Because AI has been a big interest for a lot of us, you know, and especially a big topic of the discussion during the WordCamp uh, Europe as well. So yeah, how are you using AI tools in your work and life? Um, normally to do the, the first draft of things. Okay. Uh, we deal with quite a lot of publishers hmm. and uh, Obviously, yes. <laughs> the entire topic of the last hour. Of, um, you can probably edit that part out as a dumb thing to say. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we deal with we deal with a lot of publishers, and the advice that we give to them is to plan in the opposite direction from AI. That within even now, probably now, there's 
torrents and torrents of AI generated content flooding onto the web. Mm -hmm. AI can be a useful tool to maybe scaffold a blog post, but if you want to be a successful publisher, people need to care about you and what you have to say mm. um, that uh, what kind of the advice we're giving to people about AI is that you need to be trying to take a stand in opposition to AI. How can you make your work more personal, more uh, more relevant to the users, more caring, show more heart? Um, uh, AI will will be useful, will be a useful background tool. But for me, um, our use of AI is pretty limited at the moment. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Cammy is a little bit of a cynic. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, that's why I, I'm just curious that how, um, you know, especially um, as a founder or being a part of the WordPress community, how we are all utilizing and leveraging the AI tools. Um, but yeah, I think in general, my understanding is that if you look at the AI revolution, you know, so um, yeah, Genie is out of the bottle, you know, it's not gonna go back. So one or other way, yeah, we all have to adapt or, you know, start learning or le leveraging the AI tools and see how we can actually uh, utilize that um, for our personal and professional growth. Um, I'm looking at most of these AI tools as more like, as you say, like a co-pilot, you know, so it's not something that's going to kind of like replace what I do, but more like just help me enhance what I do, you know, so it kind of like becoming my co-pilot, like a personal assistant who helps me doing some of those errands and chores that usually like if I try to do it, probably I'll suck at it or probably I will not be able to be do as good as uh, an AI tool can do. Um, like I had, I had, I gave the example of doing some research on universities before. Yeah. Um, one of the things I did with the AI tools was say, Hey, give me a list of the, uh, 100 oldest universities in France. Hmm. Bang, it produced the list for me. I had to go back. I double-checked everything. There was a few mistakes in there. Hmm. But, yeah, very helpful just yeah. to get started with the first draft of something. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, Steve, it has been wonderful um, having you here and talking about uh, WordPress uh Gutenberg phase three collaboration, and also, uh, you know, the importance of having some habits and hobbies outside work. Uh, yeah, a lot of interesting discussions and conversation. Um, is there any uh, parting thoughts um, that you would like to to share? Uh, no, I. Um, it's always fun to get on a podcast with someone whose work you admire. Um, I admire what you're doing, Anil. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing your launch and and meeting you again in uh, in Washington, D.C. for WordCamp US. Me too. Uh, thanks, Steve. And uh, the last question is, um, we're going to include these details in our show note as well, but how can people find you and learn more about the work you do or stay connected with you? Oh, sure. Um, I'm at steveburge, B-U-R-G-E dot com. And from there, it has a link to my social accounts and what I'm up to. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll include all of this in the show notes. And um, yeah, if you're interested to learn more about Multicollab, I think uh, the easiest thing will be just search for Google Doc style uh, collaboration in WordPress, and probably you'll find a bunch of different resources that will all lead to Multicollab <laughs> or type in Multicollab. <laughs> great. Awesome. Uh, it was great to have you here, Steve. And with that, we'll wrapping this 